A cycle is a sequence of events that repeats over and over again. Daytime and nighttime happen over and over again, so they are events that repeat again and again in a cycle. In fact, daytime and nighttime make up one of the most important cycles in nature. Daytime and nighttime give living things just the right amount of time to be active and time to rest. It takes 24 hours, or one whole day and one whole night, for Earth to rotate once on its axis. Daytime happens when the part of Earth you live on faces the sun. Nighttime happens when the part of Earth you live on faces away from the sun. So the Earth moves in two ways. The first way, rotation, causes daytime and nighttime. So the sun does not move during the cycle of daytime and nighttime. Instead, the Earth is rotating or spinning. The second way that Earth moves is called revolution. The Earth moves or revolves in an almost circular path around the Sun. Earth makes one revolution or orbit around the Sun about every 365 days or every year. So right now we're going to quickly look at the four seasons and we're going to review those. I want you to listen carefully to hear about the main topic of the Read Aloud, how the tilt of the Earth affects the amount of sunshine we receive as it orbits the Sun. You're going to hear more about how the tilted Earth orbits the Sun to cause the seasons. Right now, Earth is moving. Even though you cannot feel it, Earth is always moving in space in two ways. The first way the Earth moves is called rotation. Rotation is the movement of Earth around its axis. This controls the cycle of daytime and nighttime. The Earth takes 24 hours to turn or rotate once on its axis. The Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction from daytime to nighttime and back to daytime again. So counterclockwise means to move in the opposite direction from the hands on a clock. During rotation, the part of Earth that is facing the sun changes. When it is daytime, where you are. When it is daytime where you are, that means that the part of the Earth on which you are standing is facing the Sun. Sunlight hits our planet and moves across it from east to west. This is why we see the Sun rising in the east and setting in the west. Sunset eventually occurs when certain parts of Earth turn or rotate away from the Sun and nighttime begins. This cycle continues over and over again. The second way the Earth moves is called revolution. Earth revolves or orbits around the Sun in an almost circular path. Therefore, as you live on Earth, you are traveling around the Sun, too. It takes Earth 365 and one-fourth days, or one year, to complete one revolution or orbit. You might be wondering about the one-fourth of a day. This one-fourth explains why we have a leap year every four years. During a leap year, we add on one additional day to the calendar to catch it up to Earth's orbit around the Sun. So four quarters, or four fourths, equal one whole, or one whole number, just like four quarters equal one dollar. Earth is tilted as it orbits the Sun. Tilt or slant your head to one side. The Earth remains at the same angle and points in the same direction throughout its entire orbit. Now let's find out more about how Earth's tilt causes the seasonal cycle. Earth is divided into hemispheres or halves, just like an orange can be cut in half either through the center from side to side or from the top to the bottom. Earth can also be divided two different ways. Our planet is divided in half into the northern and southern hemispheres by an imaginary line on its surface called the equator. The equator is the same distance from the North Pole as it is from the South Pole. The United States, where we live, is located in the Northern Hemisphere. Earth can also be divided into two halves called the Eastern and Western Hemispheres. These hemispheres are divided by the Prime Meridian, an imaginary line used to split Earth into Eastern and Western halves. When the Northern Hemisphere is tilted toward the Sun during Earth's revolution around the Sun, it relieves more intense light from the Sun at a more direct angle. During this time, it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Around June 21st each year, the sun reaches its highest point overhead in the northern hemisphere. This is called the summer solstice and is referred to as the longest day of the year. 
That means that there is daylight for a longer period of time on that day than any other day of the year. People in the Southern Hemisphere are experiencing winter, while people in the Northern Hemisphere are experiencing summer. On June 21st in the Southern Hemisphere, that part of Earth is tilted away from the sun, with the sun at a low angle in the sky. The sunlight is not as strong or as intense, and there is less of it, so that part of Earth receives less light and less energy than the Northern Hemisphere. June 21st is the winter solstice, or shortest day of the year, in the Southern Hemisphere. It is the opposite of the Northern Hemisphere. So North and South are opposites, just like summer and winter are opposites. As Earth revolves around the Sun, the seasons begin to change depending on which hemisphere is tilted most directly toward the Sun. This depends on where Earth is on its revolution or orbit around the Sun. One revolution takes one year, and each hemisphere is tilted directly in the Sun for part of the year. Six months after the longest day in the Northern Hemisphere, the shortest day occurs. The winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere is on December 21st. This is, of course, the longest day of the year, or summer solstice, in the Southern Hemisphere. They are opposites. When Earth is halfway between the two solstices, both hemispheres receive the same amount of sunlight. This means that the hours of daylight and of darkness are the same in each hemisphere. The days that are equal are called equinoxes. The spring equinox occurs at the beginning of spring on March 21st. The autumn equinox occurs at the beginning of autumn on September 21st. The cycle of one complete orbit or revolution of Earth around the sun marks or measures one year. Living things respond to the changes in sunlight and warmth throughout the four seasons of the year. With increased sunlight and warmth during spring and summer, many living things tend to grow well. Animals are born and plants grow. With decreased sunlight during autumn and winter, some plants are ready to be harvested, whereas others die. Some become dormant or become inactive and stop growing and making new leaves for the winter and wait for the sunlight to return. You will see that most trees do this in the fall and winter. Some animals, to avoid the winter chill, hibernate or migrate. When animals migrate, they move to warmer environments. So I want you to stop and think of two words that describe each season. Not every part of Earth experiences seasons, though. Different areas of Earth have different types of weather. This is partly because of the shape and tilt of our planet. This means that different parts of Earth receive different amounts of sunlight and warmth. The area around the equator receives the greatest amount of direct intense sunlight, so some of the warmest parts of Earth are located in that part of the planet. The North and South Poles are at opposite ends of our planet, and they receive the least direct sunlight. In fact, although they are so far apart, they have the same kind of weather as each other. It is always cold in the North and South Poles, and both places are usually covered with ice. In the next lesson, you'll learn more about the cycle involving the four seasons and how each season brings with it an ever-changing landscape. Which season is your favorite? What was the main topic of our read aloud today? Name the four seasons in order. How long does it take Earth to orbit or revolve around the sun? The equator divides Earth into which two hemispheres? The first day of summer is called the summer solstice. What is special about this particular day? The first day of winter is called the winter solstice. What is special about this particular day? What do the first day of spring and the first day of autumn have in common? How are plants and animals affected by the seasonal cycle? Does the part of the Earth near the equator experience seasons? Do the North and South Poles experience seasons? So in the read aloud today, you heard tilt your head to one side. Say the word tilt with me. Tilt. Tilt means to slant or place at an angle. 
Andrea will have to tilt her water bucket so that every drop can spill out onto her plants. What's the word we've been talking about today? Tilt.